Hi, everybody. Welcome. You are in the right place if you are here for the MELS Metropolitan Expeditionary Learning School Middle House, or, sorry, Middle School Open House. The MELS Middle School Open House. Uh, you are a parent, a, a fifth grader. We are going to start in one minute. We're going to give one more minute for families to arrive. Going to give just one more minute. We're going to get started. Uh, we are going to begin just by doing a little talking. We will take questions later, uh, but if you can just hold tight, that would be great. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Pat Finley. I am one of the co-principals uh, and co-founders of the Metropolitan Expeditionary Learning School and want to welcome all of you to our open house. This is definitely not the open house or type of open house we anticipated 11 years ago when we founded the school. Um, so much has definitely changed in the last few months. First, we just want to say to all of you, we send our best during a really challenging time uh thrilled that you could make it tonight even with all the news coming out today it certainly has been a busy few weeks and, and a busy day today so uh again i'm pat finley um i'm one of the co-principals one of the hosts tonight and tonight we look forward to telling you a little bit about the school and uh, we look forward to answering as many of your questions as we can uh, I am, uh, I, I was a, a teacher in the Baltimore City uh, and DC public school system. I taught in Chile, in Chile also. And then I was also an assistant principal in the South Bronx. So that's just a little bit about me before making my way over here to District 28 and learning about Queens, uh, which was about 13 years ago. And then we, uh, Damon and I worked together to Put in a proposal with the city to open up a new school in district 28 and uh, 11 years later uh we and probably like 70 open houses later here we are so i want to welcome you all it's great to have you um and i'm going to hand off to Damon. hi everybody uh welcome uh my name is damon mccord i'm one of the co-principals and co-founders of mel's um like Pat said, really want to thank you all for taking the time tonight. Uh, this is a very awkward format for us. Usually we're face to face in our really pretty auditorium, um, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna make lemonade out of lemons. So um, tonight we are going to share a little bit about the school. It's going to be a lot of us talking, unfortunately. Um, and then we're going to give you a chance to take a look at a video that was produced um, that features our school heavily and gives an example of, of some of the work that we do here at MELS. Um, as you may have noticed already, there is no chat. We are using Zoom webinar tonight. So uh, the way you will be able to ask questions is through the Q&A function down at the bottom of your uh, Zoom screen. If you click Q&A, um, you'll be able to type in a question to us and we will answer you and it will be displayed on the, on the sidebar for the Q&A box. Um, really quickly, a little bit about me. Um, I'm originally from Flint, Michigan. Um, I've been in education for a little over 20 years. Um, we, uh, I was a, a teacher for a number of years and then an assistant principal in the South Bronx and then uh, along with Mr. Finley, we we opened Mel's uh, 11 years ago, and it has easily been the highlight of my educational career. Um, 
I'm going to introduce a, a couple of important folks at Mel's, uh, probably way more important than, than myself or, or Finley. Um, so first, I want to uh, ask Ms. Mills, our, eight, our assistant principal, to turn her camera on and introduce herself. Good evening. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Hillary Mills. Um, I have been at Mel's, pardon the baby who is going to sleep promptly. Um, uh, I've been at Mel's for 10 years. Uh, I came, I taught in California for about seven years as an outdoor educator and middle school math and science teacher, and then uh, visited Mel's and thought it was a good reason to um, drive across the country and moved to New York City and got to start the very first uh, eighth grade class uh, and then looped with those students who are also our pioneer class, our founding graduating class of 2016, looped with them up to start the high school. I taught ninth, 10th and 11th grade science for a few years and then transitioned into being the assistant principal about four years ago. Um, so I love Mel's, everything about it, um, teaching there, working with students, the families, community, the whole piece of it. Um, and really grateful that you spent some time to be here tonight. Um, I also, I will pass it off to one of my former students and now um, an amazing member of our community, which is Ashley Garcia, Ms. Garcia, our parent coordinator. Hi everyone, good evening. I'm really excited for you all to be here. Um, I'm Ms. Garcia, I'm the parent coordinator. You could definitely reach out to me with any inquiries that you have. Um, like mentioned, I was actually a District 28 student. I applied for the first graduating class of MELS. It was actually applied in seventh grade. Um, and I'm really, really excited to kind of be here to represent what it's like to be a student at MELS. Um, if there's any students with you here, like I know it's mainly parents probably taking over the Zoom, but I think students here are curious about what it really is to be um, a student at MELS. I am definitely the go-to person. Um, did seventh to 12th grade, graduated. I went to college, one of the SUNY schools, graduated in three years because of MELS and everything they taught me. So um, definitely a bit advocate. Um, para todas mis familias que hablan español, hola, buenas noches. Bienvenido por estar aquí en nuestra cita. Estamos muy orgullosos por estar con ustedes esta noche. Si tienes cualquier pregunta en esta cita que escuchas algo y quieres asegurar que, que lo, escuchaste, lo escuchaste bien, lo puedes poner en el chat en español y yo te lo puedo responder cualquier cosa. Um, también puedes mandar un correo electrónico después de esta cita para hablar. También hacemos eso. Y en sí, estamos muy orgullosos por tenerte. Um, yo fui un, un alumno de la escuela. Yo apliqué cuando fue en el, el sexto grado y, y estamos aquí ahorita. Gradué, ahora estoy trabajando aquí. Entonces, cualquier pregunta que tú o tu estudiante tiene, me pueden preguntar. Y sí, lo voy a pasar. How are we passing on to Mr. McCord, Mr. Finley? Thanks, Ashley. Um, so, uh, in addition, if, if you have uh, specific questions for Ashley, either in English or Spanish, please feel free to type them in the chat um, <clears throat> and, uh, or not in the chat, in the Q&A function. Uh, you should also have the, uh, your chat box open because we will be posting some links to our school website as well as some resources uh, for, for you all to take a look at. So you won't be able to chat with us, but we're gonna drop some resources and some um, links in there for you. Okay, um, I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Finley. Thanks. So again, I, I'm Pat Finley. For those that came late, you'll be able to watch this. It'll be uploaded. You can take a look at it uh, later. You have not missed much so far, uh, but I'm Pat Finley. I'm one of the co-principals and just want to start by talking a little bit about uh, the history. For those that don't know, um, we are uh, in a, a, a shared campus building. Uh, that opened 11 years ago. So in 2010, it was our first year. As uh, Ms. Barcia mentioned, we opened with both sixth and seventh grade that year. Um, ever since then, only, you're, the only grade to really enter is sixth grade, but that first year we took sixth and seventh graders. Uh, and each year we added a grade until we were at our full complement of grades uh, as a six through 12 school. And in the last 11 years, we've enjoyed a lot of success and have been really appreciative of, um, you know, all of our families and community members and staff and the efforts they've made to, to really truly make Mel's one of the best schools in the city. We really uh, say that and, and mean it, that um, 
we really feel uh, like it is a special place. And in the data, which we'll talk about a little later of our students when they exit in 12th grade and the colleges they get into and the success they have in college, it, it's as strong as any school's data in New York City. Um, so, um, you know, as part of our history, I do just kind of want to mention as I, you know, I did at the beginning that we are living through a really challenging time right now. Hopefully, um, we will see those that get admitted uh, next year in the building every day, and hopefully life will soon return to, to uh, close to normal. Um, but we have been, uh, you know, faced with the challenges other schools have uh, had, and just kind of want to name as part of our history, like our school has really uh, an amazing staff that adapts and, and does everything they can for kids. And, you know, whether that was during uh, Hurricane Sandy or uh, now during COVID, our, our teaching staff works overtime to meet families' needs and, and get to know students. We are a school that prides ourselves on getting to know kids. So we uh, do have uh, live instruction every day. I know some schools have just moved to asynchronous or posting assignments and and we, we do have live instruction every day that most importantly, like our teachers are really working to, to provide kids with meaningful experiences during that time, which I'll talk a little bit more about uh, as we move forward. Um, I'm gonna hand back off to Dana. Great, thank you. Um, so when we first started MELS uh, back in 2010, um, one of the things that was really important to us was that we were a District 28 school um, serving all of District 28 and not just a specific area. And so, you know, with that in mind, we really made an effort to make sure that all at the time, I think it was 25 different elementary schools in the district, um, that all those students knew that MELS was an option for them and, and really uh, reached out to make sure that we had as, as diverse of a representation of the district as possible. Um, as most of you know, in Queens, most uh, elementary schools tend to go to the same middle school and there's not a lot of people who, who go uh, too far away. Um, Mel's is definitely an outlier in that. Uh, we have students from over 20 different elementary schools in the district. Um, and it is, we feel, our greatest strength uh, to have students that come from such a wide range of backgrounds and have had, um, you know, such different educational experiences. Uh, one of our one of our values is is really uh, taking risks as a learner and um, success and failure. And, and we really want students to to go outside of their comfort zone and get to know people and and interact with people that they might not have interacted with in their elementary schools. Um, as a result, we are one of the most, if not the most diverse school um, in New York City or New York State. So we, um, we're, we're incredibly diverse in terms of the, the four racial categories that the Department of Education uses. Um, we are a Title I school. We have about 60% uh, of our students that qualify for free lunch. Um, we have students who have achieved uh, really high scores on standardized tests and have had a, a, a really strong uh, experience coming from their elementary school. And we have students that have not done well on standardized tests and, and may not have had a great elementary school experience. Um, that all makes MELS an incredibly interesting and powerful place uh, for, for students to learn. Um, we are a school that, that believes deeply in, in progressive education. And so Progressive education really is focused around a, a couple of big ideas. So the, the, the first one is, is doing like meaningful work that is connected to real world experience. So at MELS, uh, students aren't going to be learning just random things that have no connection to their lives. Uh, they're going to be learning real world things that are, are hopefully relevant to them and engaging in authentic learning experiences that um, are, are much different than standard textbook-based learning. Um, we also have students, uh, there's a huge emphasis on, on creating high quality work. Um, we don't think that a, a end of chapter test or um, you know, some big quiz is the best way for students to represent um, what they've learned. And so 
we really try to invest as much as we can in terms of um, projects and products at the end of our uh, curricular units. Um, and then finally, and probably the most important is all of our academic pieces are, are really important, but none of it matters if we're not focused on uh, helping to, to build good people. Um, and so uh, from our outset, like Mel's has been focused on um, culture and character and really helping students understand um, that to learn important information is one thing, but the world is not going to change for the better if you are not a good person and you don't um, value the people that you work and live with. So um, there's, a, there's a big emphasis on, on uh, social emotional learning back before COVID was, was the thing that made everybody talk about social emotional learning. Um, and, and there's a real emphasis on, on real world work that students are doing. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Finley to talk about our partnerships with EL Education and New York City Outward Bound. Thanks, Damon. So again, really weird tonight to just kind of be talking at a computer screen. I uh, wish we could see you all sending our best. Um, we are just trying to uh, share as much information as possible. And one of the most important things about us is in our name. The, we are the Metropolitan Expeditionary Learning School. And uh, that expeditionary learning uh, came for, uh, it was a part of our name for a reason. We are partnered with New York City Outward Bound and EL Education, that's expeditionary learning education. Uh, and those partner organizations have been very pivotal and important in, in our growth over the years. Uh, EL Education is a group that partners with about 200 schools across the country, urban schools, rural schools, big schools, small schools, elementary schools, high schools, all different types of schools. And what they have in common, besides really honestly being some of the best schools in the country, is um, they have a belief in a set of structures that helps students learn best. Uh, tonight, you're going to hear a little bit about some of those structures. And again, it goes back to this uh, idea of, of progressive education that, that students aren't just receivers of information where you just give them information to memorize, they spit it back, but Students need to be active learners, problem solvers, uh, be ready to move on and be successful after high school. Uh, so, you know, we do focus on that in our learning. We are not a school that gives a bunch of worksheets for kids to fill out. Um, if you are looking for that kind of school, uh, e even though our building is nice and shiny and, and still pretty new looking, we probably aren't a good fit. Uh, again, we really want to encourage families uh, move forward with Mel's if this is the kind of education you're looking for for your child. So uh, a couple of those structures as an EL school, one of those structures is called crew. And every day we start when we're in the building our day with a class called crew. It's no, no bigger than 16 students. And it's kind of like a little family unit within our school. It's a place where kids uh, work with one another. They learn to cooperate. They are introduced to the school, introduced to systems. Uh, and really the building block for all the work they're going to do in classes is crew. Um, you can't really be successful in math, science, social studies, English if you're not organized, uh, open to learning, ready to take chances, willing to collaborate and work with others. Those things have to be built uh, for students to be successful. And crew is a place where we build those skills um, that students use not just in their classes in MELS, but the rest of their lives. We have students who come back from college and they say, you know, our first week of college, we did all these kind of crew activities and I was really prepared and these other kids weren't really ready for that. Um, and it's true, like we, we are building uh, a plan for your child for the long run. Uh, so in addition to crew, we also have a structure called SLCs. It is an expeditionary learning structure. And again, these are just a couple examples. Uh, SLCs are student-led conferences, and they're exactly what the name sounds like, student-led conferences, rather than teacher conferences where a teacher just kind of tells you, hey, your child's doing the work or they're not doing the work. It's a chance for a student to talk about the work they're doing, sh showcase their work, uh, look through their work, talk with you about their work, and, and really talk about what are they doing well and what do they need work on. We think students being able to talk uh, about themselves, their work, uh, present, it's an incredibly important skill for life. So again, it, it's a structure we have in our school that we um, foster uh, these student skills and, and really work to build over years. The last 
example of an EL structure I'm going to mention, and then we're going to watch a video to see some of these structures in play, is expeditions. So in our school, uh, in addition to crew and student-led conferences, we also build units of study called expeditions. And rather than just have a textbook where we go chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, uh, we take a look at the same state standards that other schools use. We use the same social studies, same science, same math, same English standards, but the way we organize them is more meaningful for kids. It's not dictated by a textbook company, but rather our teachers take the time to organize the curriculum so that there are opportunities to make connections um, so that when um, they're studying food production and science and, and looking at uh, the biology of it, they're also looking at food production throughout history in social studies class. And this idea of making connections across contents, uh, that is what an expedition unit is really about. And that expedition helps students make connections. It helps students move out into the real world. So the example for that food production unit is we do field work out at farmer's markets. Uh, our students have foraged as part of their field work. Um, and then at the end, students uh, create a product or presentation to really capture their learning during that expedition. So again, you're getting the brief version tonight. I really recommend that you take a look at our website, the New York City Outward Bound website, or the EL Education website to learn a little bit more about our school and our program. Uh, right now, we're going to show a short video that also just speaks to some of that good work and what it looks like. And in this video for Miel Education, we are actually the featured school. So you're gonna see a lot of Mel's teachers, students. I might even be in there, who knows? I'm gonna hand it off to Damon to set up the video. support system is really, really amazing. Whether it's peers or your teachers or your principals, you know that you have a whole bunch of people behind you supporting you and pushing you forward. And that's what really drives our success, is being supported. So when I feel that support, and us as individuals feel that support, then we can go ahead and domino effect that towards the students. In our schools, there's this really powerful sense of community. There's this ethos of we are crew, not passengers, where everybody takes care of and looks after one another. We basically stay in the same crew class throughout all four years of our high school experience. And like your crew basically becomes like a little family. Crew and the cooperation that happens in classrooms really helps to build connections between students and teachers and, uh, and empathy for one another. Teaching compassion and teaching character is a part of the curriculum. It's important for you to know and be able to take accountability for the things that you're learning. The work that we do is entirely student-centered. We think about our students constantly, both who they are, but also where they're at. I've been able to push past my comfort zone. Brooklyn Collaborative has kind of just made me persistence to the point where I believe that I can succeed in any setting. The academic work that students do really pushes them beyond what they thought was possible. Having to do research, not just like answer questions on a test, students learn more. One of the unique things about my school is the hands-on learning model. We do a lot of taking notes and just a lot of critical thinking. It's helpful not only here, it's a lot of uh, preparation for college. When our teachers design curriculum and they build our units, which are our expeditions, they, they look for content that is meaningful and relevant.
Outward Bounce is a model that does think about the future and all that it does. And I believe that's the reason it stresses getting out into the community and doing your learning outside of the classroom because that's the world that they will be living in. So when you go on field work, it's not necessarily like a field trip. It's a applied learning. Thank you for coming. Welcome to Nielsen. If I see the things I'm learning in school applied to that specific job, it's going to make me want to work more and make, make me more motivated. And that's our starting point, is a, both a belief and an expectation that, that everyone can do remarkable things. Just knowing that you have potential inside of you and it doesn't matter where you come from, you know that you'll be able to do as much as the person next to you. Anything is possible if I am somebody who's persistent, if I'm somebody who's kind, courageous, collaborative, and all those other core values that we hold dear. As I go on through college and as I go on through life, I'll keep that in mind to believe in myself more because I'm much more capable than I think I am. Uh, thanks, Damon. So, you know, hopefully uh, if you are if been watching the video tonight, learned a little bit more, you are hopefully at this point more excited to apply to MELS. Um, and, you know, we do want to recognize like, th there are some great schools in District 28. Um, we are not here to compare ourselves to any one of them. We can just stay like we, we want families to, to find the school that's a right fit. And it, it gets mentioned all the time of like, hey, is this school a good fit for my child? We serve all kinds of kids, all kinds. And you know, our, our college acceptance list is Yale, Cornell, Barnard, CUNY schools, SUNY schools, two-year schools, four-year schools. Like, look, we are in the business of serving kids and meeting kids' needs. Uh, that being said, if you're applying, uh, and again, families that are listening tonight, you have a fifth grader in District 28, um, you're really applying because you believe in our, our school's vision for what, how students learn best. And I just kind of want to name that, again, if you're, if you're applying because the building looks nice, this probably will not be the right fit. Uh, you, we are really hoping that families are going to apply because they believe in a progressive vision for education that is more than about memorizing information uh, and, and you know, preparing kids for life rather than regurgitating uh, memorized uh, information. So you know, I, if, if you really believe that, then, then we are a good fit. But if, if your family is looking for a more traditional model, then, then there are other, other schools and other opportunities to, to check out. So I just say that for the application process. That being said, if you know at this point, if you're like, yeah, this is the kind of school I'm interested in, this is where I want my child to be for the next seven years, great, we look forward to that. So that process starts now. And yes, you know, we do have a lot of families apply. Um, you know, I know families always wanna know how many applied or what their chances are. Uh, I can only say like it's different year to year, but yeah, we, we do have a lot of families apply. Um, and the, the most important thing you can do if you are interested uh, in, in attending is fill out the application with your elementary school and rank us as high as possible. Um, you know, the ranking matters and I know all schools are gonna tell you to rank them number one, but at the end of the day, that's the advice I'm gonna give too. Again, if, if this is a school you want to be at, then, then you need to rank us number one, I would recommend, rank us highly. And, and then keep your fingers crossed. We are a lottery based school. Um, so, you know, the DOE will randomly select students. Um, and McCord and I have absolutely nothing to do with the application process. We don't, we will submit the application to your elementary school. And then the DOE will let us know who uh, receives an offer for a seat in the spring. Um, so we, we know that, uh, you know, that is, uh, anxiety producing for, for families. Um, and, you know, I can only say, you know, we are here to answer your questions during what is a challenging process. And the other thing I can say is the, one of the best things is we built a school, not just for success in seventh grade, 
we, we built a school that's success for six through 12 to get your child for college. So for those families that do get in, we, you're with us in high school and you don't have to go through this whole thing again in eighth grade. Um, you, you are guaranteed a seat in our high school once you're in in sixth grade. Um, so that's a little bit about the application process. I'm gonna hand it to Damon if I missed anything or if he wants to even just reiterate and drive some of those points home. Thanks. Um, there is a question in the chat about if you uh, only do middle school once or if you get in, are you in for all seven years? Um, that's a great question and one that uh, we always say in person and um, we, we forgot to do it today, but I'll say it now. Um, we are designed to be a six through 12 school. We can't control what people do when they are in eighth grade going into ninth grade. About 90% of our eighth graders continue on into high school. Um, but I do want people to, to really kind of go back to what Pat said earlier about making sure this is the right school for you. Our middle school is great. Um, but if you're approaching this with the idea that you're just going to be here for three years and then leave, we would ask you to, to either commit to the seven years or um, not potentially take a seat away from a family that was going to be here for seven whole years. Um, we have over a thousand people apply for what's basically 130 seats in sixth grade. Um, and, you know, it is almost impossible to get in in ninth grade to Mel's. And so for folks that are committed to, to being here for those seven years, uh, I would hate for them to lose a, a chance at a seat for a family that may just want to be here for three years and be out. Um, again, we can't force anybody to do, do anything. That's just our, our ask. And also, you know, we are, we are not a middle school that's set up for um, like a number of other middle schools to like, for us, eighth grade is not the end game. Like our middle school is set up to support our students doing well in high school and getting into the best college they can possibly get into. So, um, you know, there our, our middle school definitely does look a little different. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but I did just want to want to answer that question directly. Um, so one of the uh, one of the things that that make Mel's a, a unique place is we have a number of different structures that you know, on top of being of having a very non-traditional curriculum, we just do things a little differently than than most other middle schools, especially middle schools in Queens, um, which tend to be a little more traditional and really are pushing kids to to prepare for specialized high schools or some screened high school. Um, our middle schoolers, we are preparing them for Mel's High School, um, which is one of the best high schools in the city. So we have um, I dropped some resources in the chat. Um, the, in that folder uh, in Google Drive, the, one of the main things uh, that is the first recognizable thing for Mel's is that we have a lottery and we have a lottery, I'm sorry, that we have a uniform um, and you can, you can access our, our, uniform, our dress code policy there in the, in the documents within the Drive folder. Um, it's, it's not a, a uniform that you know, has like a shirt and tie or anything like that. It's basically khaki pants, um, black or brown shoes, and a Mel's shirt or a Mel's sweatshirt. Um, it's not something that, you know, we wanted to burden families with having, you know, a really big, involved, expensive uniform. Um, and we, unlike a lot of schools, we don't think it, it does anything to solve any disciplinary issues or anything like that. Um, the reason we do it is really to develop a shared sense of, of community and shared sense of culture within the school. Um, there, there are a number of other benefits. Uh, you know, our, our campus is huge. So if a sixth grader gets lost, we want people to know like where to return that sixth grader. Um, if, if some students are making some bad choices up on Metropolitan Avenue, it's really easy for people to follow up with, with myself and Finley and say, you know, this kid was messing around, you might want to talk to them, or this kid did this awesome thing and was super helpful. Um, please let them know I appreciated it. Um, so the uniform is, is a piece of, of the larger sense of what we do at Mel's. Um, now, some fifth grade students may be sitting there 
and saying, I don't want to go to that school because they have a uniform. Um, and, and parents, I would encourage you to have a conversation with your child about that. Um, you know, some students are like, I can't express myself unless I can wear my ripped jeans. Um, we want students to express themselves through who they are as people and the, and the quality of their ideas and, and the way they attack their learning. Um, and so we want people to have an expanded sense of identity and expression, um, not have it be something like superficial, like what kind of jeans you're wearing or what kind of shoes you have. Um, you're wearing khaki pants, I'm wearing khaki pants, you got a male shirt, I got a male shirt. So what makes us different? Who we are as people? And, and that's what we're really trying to get at. Um, your, your students uh, also are going to, it's middle school, so students start to have cell phones and things like that. We are in line with the Department of Education policy around cell phones. Um, students are allowed to have them with them when they come to school. Um, but we cannot see them nor hear them at any point during the school day. Uh, if we do, we confiscate the cell phone. Um, and, and the only person that can pick it up is a parent. And right now, parents are probably like, yeah, that's a great policy. And students are like, oh, that's a terrible policy. Um, parents, there will come a time where somebody will call your child or they'll forget to turn their phone off when they came in in the morning and we will confiscate their phone and you are going to be frustrated with us because you will have to come pick it up. We just wanna remind people now, our consistency with the cell phone policy is why we do not have cell phone issues in our classroom. Um, you know, you go to some schools and kids are on their phones all the time, not really paying attention to, to the teacher. Um, we, we do not have that. Our students are focused on the learning from, from the time they get in to the time they leave. Um, so that's the cell phone policy. That document is also in the, in the folder I shared. Um, so the way the day is set up for, uh, for middle school is um, students have, uh, unlike, unlike a lot of elementary schools where they have double math and double English, um, and you might get social studies once or twice a week or science once or twice a week, uh, at Mel's, you are going to have English, math, social studies, science every single day for 68 minutes per day. Um, you are also going to have uh, physical education two times a week and art two times a week. We really, really pare down uh, what we do for our middle school schedules so that we can make sure students have a strong foundation in those subjects. Um, we do not have world language in the middle school. We have, we offer four years of it in our high school, but there is no world language in, in middle school for Mel's. Um, like I said, we have long class periods, um, 68 minutes. You cannot do deep, uh, you know, high quality challenging work in a span of 40 minutes in a classroom. Um, so we, we really invested the time and the resources into making sure our students have long blocks of time to, to, to really investigate um, the, the things that we're learning. Um, I see some people are raising hands um, because this is a webinar format. Um, you're going to have to type your question into the Q&A. Um, if you are unable to do that, you can also uh, feel free to email us after this meeting um, and we will get back to you um, as soon as we can. Um, in terms of after school programs, uh, we have a number of after school programs from middle school. We have a citywide after school program through Global Kids, which um, you know is part of the city middle school uh, after school program. But we also do our own um, some of our own middle school after school. We have a, a Girls Inc. Uh, after school program. We have a coding program for after school for middle school. We have a manga club, um, and then we have a couple of sports teams every year that um, they don't really do competitive sports, but they, you know, play soccer and they arrange some scrimmages with other schools occasionally. So, um, and then finally, it's nothing for anybody to freak out about right now, but we are an outward bound school. And one of the highlights of every sixth graders year at Mel's is we do a four day, three night 
um, backpacking trip to upstate New York at Sharp Reservation up in Fishkill. Um, and students go with their crew and their crew advisor and two outward bound course instructors for a trip where they do high ropes courses, low ropes courses, an overnight backpacking experience. Um, and I know some of you are sitting there like I can't see you, but I feel like I can see you just shaking your head like no way is my kid going on that trip. Um, I don't want you to freak out about it now. We're going to have lots of conversations about it. Um, but I'm telling you, we have not lost a single student to a bear attack or, um, you know, who, who got separated from the group and is still up there like eating berries and twigs. That has never happened at Mel's. So we will talk more about the crew orientation trip in the future once you get into Mel's. Um, but just know that is one of the, the most important things that happen uh, at Mel's in sixth grade. Um, there are a lot of questions in the, ch in the Q and A. So I'm gonna turn it over to Finley really quickly to uh, go over some of the why to apply to Mel's questions. And then we are, we'll try and clear up some of these Q and A's uh, at the end. Thanks. Uh, great. Um, I, you know, I, we're, we're definitely not here to, to sell everybody on Mel's. I wanna be clear, like uh, I said it earlier, I'm gonna say it one more time. Like there are some uh, good options in uh, District 28. Uh, you know, and we uh, appreciate that there that kids and families do have options uh, in this district for for a great middle school experience. Um, the the reasons you're hopefully going to apply to Mel's are you know going to be because you feel like this is the best fit. So I'm going to kind of just get this uh, part out of the way. Like one reason to apply to Mel's is we really are one of the best schools in the city. Like, I don't, I don't say that just like, because I feel that way. Um, you know, I'm going to point to some data pieces, uh, but we don't front load and put big banners up in our school, but, but we do have some really strong things to point to. So one is, um, you know, the, the quality review that, uh, that the department of education does and they send reviewers out. Um, we had the second highest score possible that's in the, I don't know, I think it's in the top 2% of city schools for that review. When the reviewer comes out, it's available online. You can certainly take a look. Um, you know, our learning environment survey uh, is uh, certainly uh, among one of the highest in the city. Uh, our, rec our recognition we've received as a, a showcase school, we were selected as one of 37 out of whatever, 1800 uh, New York City schools is a showcase school for several years to showcase professional practice. We are one of a handful of mentor schools across the nation, mentor EL schools. Um, that's being recognized for our uh, performances in EL school uh, as far as uh, supporting students with character and skill building um, and uh, building uh, their knowledge. Uh, we have, if not, it, we probably have the strongest uh, graduation and uh, college uh, of persistence data of any unscreened school in, in New York City. Um, our high school graduation rate has been uh, averaged about 98% uh, with a 98% acceptance rate. Our persistence data of kids then going off to college and staying in college at the six month mark, it's been uh, about 89% and at the 18 month mark, 83%. That is officially uh, the highest uh, percent for any school that is not a, uh, a screened school in the entire uh, New York City. So uh, again, um, when we're looking at data and we're looking at the most meaningful data, the most meaningful data to us isn't, hey, how did one kid do on one particular test along the way? It's, it's those outcomes for life. Um, you, you know, our, our students do just fine on the regions, um, but more importantly to us, we have a, you know, a couple thousand kids that apply each year uh, for sixth grade. And then in those few ninth grade seats, uh, our eighth grade families stay with us in high school. We retain about 90% of our eighth grade families into high school. We hear that the city average is about 65%. Some of those students uh, turn down specialized schools and other offers. And then in the, our students then graduate from high school and stay in college. And, and again, our college acceptance list is, is 
uh, exceptional with students receiving scholarships and other opportunities. Um, I could go on, uh, again, that's not really the point of tonight is to put a bunch of accolades out there, but it is important for people to know, like when we say we're a, a, a great school, that's what we base it off of. Um, most importantly, why you're applying to school uh, is because you want a place for your child for the next seven years where a school cares about who they are as a person, uh, a school that welcomes all students, a school that not only says, hey, it's nice to have diversity, but, but says, you know, we're proud that we're a diverse school because it's so important for, for all of us to learn from one another that our students go off to college and come back and say, you know, being at Mel's was incredibly important for my experience in like meeting other people who are different than me and, and being able to, to excel out in the world. Um, you're applying to Mel's because you believe in a progressive vision for education where kids are at the center of learning and they're not receivers of information, but they're active participants. So, you know, I, again, like those are the things that hopefully tonight you, you value uh, investigative learning, field work, uh, students collaborating with one another, your child being able to talk about their learning, think critically, those, those are reasons to move forward with your application at MELS. Um, and again, for those families that that's not what they're looking for, we understand um, and there are other options and we um, appreciate that there are other options. So. Um, we're going to try and clean up some chat questions. Uh, again, you can't really raise your hand. It's a webinar, but you can put questions not in the chat in the Q&A. So the Q&A, Damon, do you have one you want to answer? Sorry, I was typing furiously trying to trying to get all as many questions answered as possible. Um, there's a question about uh, if Mel's has talent classes, uh, I'm I'm assuming that um, that might mean uh, how some schools offer gifted and talented programs. Um, at Mel's, we do not have an honors track. We don't have a gifted and talented program um, because that's not really in line with what we believe is best for students and for equity. Um, and so, you know, again, if if folks are looking for a place that is focused solely on the test scores that kids get in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, or the honors program that they're in, um, those just aren't things that we really believe in. Um, you know, we are we are getting students ready to think deeply about their world and learn how to interact with people that are not like them, and and get ready for a successful experience in high school and college. Um, so. You know, um, we we understand we can't be all things to all people, so we try to be really clear about what we are focused on. Um, so, so yeah, and if if folks want to talk about um, you know honors programs or whatever, uh, Pat and I are happy to to have that conversation at another time. But um, yeah, we we believe that that all students can achieve and, and be challenged in, in the same classroom. Uh, there's another question in there. Do we focus on sports or arts? <laughs> um, we do not uh, focus on either of those, um, but we do have a strong sports program in high school and a strong arts program throughout 6 through 12. Um, when we do occasionally have students that, that leave Mills uh, from ninth grade into, or from eighth grade into ninth grade, uh, more often than not, they go to um, performing arts high schools um, because they're, you know, um, they want a, a, an even better arts experience uh, and, and have an arts focus. So, um, yeah, we're not focused on, on either of those, but uh, we do have strong experiences in both. Uh, there's another question about, is this going to be posted? Yes, this uh, webinar is being recorded and will be posted to our Mel's YouTube page. Finley. Yeah, uh, happy to answer the Regents question. Um, we offer uh, integrated algebra in uh, eighth grade and earth science, but the most important part is like, I wanna explain why that is. Like we could offer a bunch of Regents in middle school if we wanted, we could offer a living environment, US history, but, but again, we are a six through 12 school and we're setting your child up for what makes sense for them as exiting as a 12th grader 
Um, so, you know, an accumulation of regents, like our kids all pass the regents in high school. Um, so we're not really that interested in like, you know, kind of getting points as a middle school uh, for passing regents. So the reason we offer the math regents is uh, just for those students who are interested uh, in uh, moving on to AP calculus eventually, um, for the sequence of courses, uh, you, you do need to begin uh, the algebra work in eighth grade. So we do have al algebra for all students. Um, the students sit for it and, and you know, students who are uh, proficient in algebra uh, by the end of eighth grade will move on to, to other courses in high school. Uh, so we, we do need to, um, again, just for looking at the, the content kids take over a sequence of, of seven years. Um, we do offer algebra. And then the second one we offer is earth science. And that's a, for, for students, uh, they just might have not have that opportunity in high school. We offer live environment, chemistry, uh, AP bio, physics. Um, we do offer earth science, but for some students, they might not have that opportunity to take it. So we do offer it in eighth grade. So they have that opportunity. But for, for the other regions, US history, live environment, um, you know, kids have a great experience with those courses in high school and, and to be honest, like it's, 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 uh, we think a better opportunity to build off of uh, the biology and US history that kids are learning in middle school and really set them up for a uh, deeper experience in high school rather than kind of skipping over courses. Um, there's a question in the, in the Q and A about uh, how often do seventh graders get music and visual art? Um, their students receive, so in sixth grade, uh, all students have visual art. They have it twice a week for 68 minutes uh, each time. And then in seventh grade, all seventh graders have music, um, again, twice a week, 68 minutes each. And then in eighth grade, they get to uh, make a choice uh, what they prefer more. Um, and then um, as, as they move into high school, they will also have the, the opportunity to, to take either music or visual art um, twice a week, 68 minutes. So um, in terms of, of uh, ensembles, um, I think the class, Finley jump in if I'm saying this wrong, I'm pretty sure the class is ensemble based and is not like an orchestra, um, but I'm, I don't know enough about the music lingo to, uh, Ms. Mills just said that I'm correct. So, uh, and then in terms of genres, it, it, it kind of runs the gamut. It's not focused on any particular genre. genre. Um, it, it ranges from uh, some, some pop uh, music all the way to students examining different protest songs over, over, the, over the years. Um, to you know more classical things, so uh, it's it's not a, a traditional music program, um, but is is a very strong program. Uh, there's another question about after school. Our after school program runs until uh, five o'clock. Um, if you're part of the uh, the DOE New York City after school program that we have, that after school runs until I think six o'clock. At this point, I, I might ask Ms. Barcy just to pop in one more time for families that were late and, and in English and Spanish, Spanish, just welcome our families and encourage uh, them to reach out with questions. Do you mind Ms. Barcia popping them back out really quick? Hola, buenas noches, familias. Um, si fuiste un poquito tarde a la cita, nomás le queremos decir si tienes cualquier pregunta um, o si escuchaste algo y nos quieres escribir para clarificar en español, me puedes escribir un correo, mi personal. Voy a poner mi correo en el chat. Es a barcia metropolitan ls.com. Um, entonces, otra vez, si escuchaste algo en la en esta reunión, uh, no entendiste muy bien, quiere que alguien lo clarifica, me puede escribir un correo electrónico. Y estamos muy, muy felices que están aquí entre las salas de nuestra escuela. Anything specific you want me to cover or rephrase something really important about our application? 
Nope, I think that's great. Uh, thanks, Ms. Barcia. And, uh, you know, families can definitely reach out to you. Um, somebody asked in the chat just about foreign language. For the three credits of foreign language that kids need by 12th grade, we have them take all three of those in ninth, 10th, and 11th uh, grade. Uh, colleges want three years of foreign language in high in, uh, before applying to college. And we just think that sequence and keeping it together at that time uh, is the best time. Um, uh, what else, McCord? Uh, there's a question in there about uh, homework. What's our philosophy about homework? Um, as you can probably tell, uh, students at Mel's have homework, but we are definitely not the school that's like, your child will have three or four hours every night of homework. Just to be honest, we don't think that's what's best for kids. Um, there, we think that whatever is being done for homework and assigned for homework needs to really complement and connect to the learning that they're doing in school and not just be repetitive, busy work that, that keeps kids from doing the things that, that make them kids. Uh, spending time with their family, spending time with their friends, going outside and playing. Um, I, I am not a big fan when my kids are, are doing homework for hours and hours on end, and I don't think it's, it's beneficial. Um, but there will be some homework and some nights will be more challenging than others. Um, but there may be nights where you have no homework and that's okay too. Um, uh, there, there's a question in there about uh, field work. We have, um, we have a variety of field work experiences. I'm not going to, to go too deep into them right now because we don't want to ruin any surprises, but um, you know our, our field work experiences have ranged from like kids going to Google, kids going to um, financial institutions to you know talk about uh, mathematical modeling that they do. Uh, they've gone to farmers markets. They've gone to Edgemere out in the Rockaways to look at uh, resiliency and sustainability out there. Um, our kids are all over the place. They. They've gone to Jackson Heights to interview people on the streets about their immigrant experience. Um, there, that would be a very fun project to take on one of these days when we actually have some time to list out all the different field work experiences that kids have had because it's, it's pretty impressive. A uh, question about how many seats uh, for sixth grade. Um, we we usually bring in anywhere from 125 to 130 middle schooler or sixth graders every year. Uh, in terms of after school, uh, we for a Mel's after school program, you don't have to apply; you just sign up for it. Um, but for the citywide after school, there is an application process for that. Some questions came up about special education and 504. Again, you know, all we have all kinds of students at our school and um, we try and support all of them. So, yes, if you have a 504 and you continue forward with that and fill out your paperwork, it continues in the middle school and, you know, uh, whatever your child's IEP program is, we do our best to accommodate um you know uh for whatever their their program is we try and uh um we have a program to to best meet the needs of, of kids so um if you have a particular question uh you can certainly follow up and email us but uh yeah um damon anything else no uh, at this point we're starting to get <clears throat> um a number of repeats in the in the questions and so I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, we're going to put our uh, recording on this on YouTube probably as early as tomorrow. So um, if you have questions or want to revisit any of that, please uh, check out our YouTube channel and you can watch the, the recording of, of this. Just make sure it's, it's the middle school open house and not the high school open house because the information is different. Finley, anything else before we say goodnight? Well, just that somebody's excited about the Queensway, McCord. So I don't know if you want to say anything about that before we go. 
I mean, we, we are also excited about the Queensway. Um, we're super pumped about it. Supposedly, we, the, the portion of the Queensway that'll be completed is the portion that runs right next to campus. And our students, you, like you talk about a fieldwork experience, our students have consulted on uh, the plans for, for what will go in that section of the Queensway for um, outdoor classrooms and things like that. So yes, we are, we're good friends of the Queensway and we're looking forward to it. Great, so we wanna thank everybody who came tonight and the question keeps coming up, when can I apply, when can I apply? All application questions for completing it need to be directed to your, your child's elementary school. They have the applications, they have the deadlines, they'll, they'll know when the information comes back. We don't handle any of that. So at this point, the two things you can do in moving forward are one, apply to MELS with hopefully a high, if not the highest rank. Um, and then two, uh, you can follow up with your school's elementary school's uh, guidance counselor with any questions about the application process. Those are the two things you can do to apply. And of course, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Ms. Barcia, Ms. Mills, Mr. McCord, or myself. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful night. We send our best in a really challenging, difficult time. Um, and again, we send our best to all of you. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Good night.